So next up, we've got Bree from Florida to talk with us. Hey there, Bree. How you doing? I'm also very sorry you're in Florida. Oh, why, is what, why is that? Have you seen the news about Florida at any point in time? I mean, in the history of my, uh, I, I'm a native Floridian in the history to have the news have been that bad, but lately it's been pretty bad in the politics. Yeah. What do you want to talk about there, Bree? So I am a evolutionary biologist. I am a PhD researcher at George Tech. And me and my colleague got into a conversation about ghosts the other day and whether ghosts conflict with the with science. Because conceptually, like you could have some people that have different senses than other people and they just adapt it to have this sense that other people don't have. It doesn't necessarily need to be like a, a paranormal thing. So I just sort of wanted to know your guys' opinion about it. Okay, can I ask, are you on a, a speakerphone or anything? Yeah, no, I'm not. You are? Now you're not? I just took it off, yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. We were having a little bit of trouble hearing you, but we were able to get it pretty well. As, as far as ghosts conflicting with science or whatnot, I think that we would need to first define what does it mean for there to be, like, what is a, what is a ghost exactly? Like, it is a ghost energy that, takes the form of humans or something like that what, what what would you consider to be a ghost necessarily like how would you if you could scientifically describe what a ghost is what would that be so maybe so you, maybe not completely as ghosts but maybe more just paranormal activity or like an explanation for um, what people perceive to be ghosts or paranormal feelings because it's so common among people if you talk to them some people don't even want to to talk about it they think it's weird but many people do have feelings that they associate with something paranormal uh, but maybe not completely like going back from the dead or something like that and you, you were positing that perhaps uh, some people can just have maybe a, a sense they can scent this type of energy through natural means better than other people that was the hypothesis yeah, but it doesn't correct? necessarily just have to be people. I mean, animals have senses of improvement that we don't have. So it could That's just be a, something that we could say that thing turn normal, but it's really just something that some people can sense, other people can't. Yeah, and I'm glad you went away from the different, like, so the first thing I my went, my brain went to was like, if ghosts are people who are the spirits of people who are dead, then you'd first have to, of course, establish that there's such a thing as a soul and and figure out some kind of mechanism by which that would survive death. And I would assume that as a scientist that you haven't necessarily seen evidence that that's the case. So I We're guess, dead. so you're saying that paranormal activity is something, is actually something natural and that we would have natural means to figure it out. And, and maybe someday down in the future, we would actually be able to replicate whatever senses, like we've been able to replicate all of our human senses in machines and in other things so that perhaps one day we would figure out how to measure these things without relying on our bodies and and people with talent so that you'd have a ghostbuster style machines that would be able to detect them is that sort of where you're going with this yeah i mean i think like what we what i've learned about evolution is that basically if, if things don't make you die and there can be elements that stay in some people's biology not have ne not necessarily killed them, but remain from their previous genetics that might not be the other people's genetics. Um, basically, the only way that something would be removed from someone's genetics is if it causes them to not be able to survive. Right? Well, in your field, I'm, you're you probably there's also obviously everything has costs, right? Like even though we may have some vestigial creatures in general may have some vestiges. But a lot of times those can be dropped due to the energy cost of having those things. So there's, we drop things when they're not a survival advantage. We don't always keep them. So that, but what are you thinking would be the survival advantage of no, no being able to sense v vague senses of paranormal type things? What, like, right, uh, why would it be, why would that be selected for in the first place? So I'm glad you asked that because I do actually have an answer for this. It, oh, good. So what if? If there are people that have died in, in one place over and over again, and that's where we perceive like ghosts come from or haunting come from, then it would be in our best interest not to be in that area because it's associated with death. Well, now, wait, can the, so is the idea that these 
that these ghosts can harm you? Is there some way that ghosts actually present some kind of like harmful um, you know, presence or something like that? Can they push you down a flight of stairs or something like that? No, it wouldn't be the ghost that would be harming you. It would just be like something in our biology that tells us if some if people have had bad experiences or or passed away in a certain area that there must be something wrong with this area. It's like in our biology, there are other like fight or fight response. That's something that's supposed to help our our, our survival. And sometimes when people feel ghosts, they feel this fight or fight, or flight response. So it's it's a biological thing that's supposed to give you more adrenaline to be able to face some sort of some sort of a something that's trying to kill you. Basically. So you've probably heard in evolutionary circles the the notion of like false pot those who the animals that are overly cautious can actually have a survival advantage whether or not the thing is true so an animal that runs away every time there's a rustling in the bushes is going to survive longer than the ones that even though there may be nothing there that's actually threatening them are going to survive more often yeah. merely because you know so with the thing you just put forth not equally be described by saying that we have evolved these stories of the paranormal and the, and those who are willing to believe in these paranormal things have survived better, even though there's nothing true about it, but they are avoiding those places that have been associated with death or are avoiding these kind of things. Like, would that not be equally plausible? Yeah, I do. I do think that it could be, some of it can be explained to like, let's say go to a haunted house like, or something where you go to a place you think it's haunted. You already have this. Um, notion that where you're going is scary, you're already feeling fear, and you feel something happen, and you, you may react in a certain way, and you're sort of preempting that. So that wouldn't be like a scientific way of studying whether or not this place that because you're already coming in, but something else. Like, um, we we can show that like there there may be like elements of a of a certain area, like hormones or other things that like you can't see that affect like your emotion. But if in certain areas that are perceived haunted, there's something physical um, there that is affecting how you feel in that place that we just haven't. Right, but you're talking about don't brain know chemistry. To... Like brain chemistry is incredibly complex, and and you know how our brains yeah. work is incredibly complex. But that doesn't mean that we require for the paranormal part to actually be true. You know, for those feelings to be triggered, right? Well, it would only happen to certain people's brains because people's brain chemistry can be different from each other. Oh, for sure. Go ahead, John. What were you saying? Oh, well, sorry. I, I didn't mean to interrupt. I was just going to say that if we could naturally describe this sixth sense that you're talking about, would those phenomena still be paranormal? Because I feel like as soon as you can describe something like like those types of things, in in reality like you can describe them as like oh well this person is highly sensitive to electromagnetic activity or this person's highly sensitive to you know a lot of naturally occurring energy in one location or something like that does it not become like just part of the normal world at that point like it's it's no longer paranormal it's just normal is that not how that would work well, I don't think, I don't consider death to be outside of the normal. I mean, everybody dies. So if it's death related or if it's related to people, like I said before, people dying in a certain place over and over again, and we get this like fear from a place that causes death, then that's also natural. So yeah, I think at the end of the day, it, it will be explained by natural phenomenon, right? That doesn't make it not paranormal. Paranormal just... The paranormal thing revolving around death. I mean, that's the, that's not what because I mean, there's a lot of things that are paranormal that are not necessarily death related. Let's say paranormal, as defined by the great Google, is uh, denoting events or phenomena such as telekinesis or clairvoyance that are beyond the scope of normal scientific understanding. So, I guess my point is is that as soon as you can describe them, like in a in science, like if you if you could figure out why certain people are more sensitive to these situations, then it just becomes part of our normal world. So it would therefore not be paranormal anymore. So I guess um, as far as like uh, that conflicting with science, I don't think that it would because, you know, if science can describe it, then it is part of the normal world. It's part of our normal reality. And, you know, I don't I don't think that 
you can really describe that as being like in conflict with science. I think that the current common notions that we have about the paranormal are in conflict with science because that, I mean, I feel like that's what it means to be paranormal is to be in conflict with science. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I actually, I agree with what you're saying there, but maybe paranormal is not the right word. Nor my question is if this was explained by science, could it just be accepted? Because I feel like the in the realm of paranormal, like you have all of these TV shows and stuff that are like pseudoscience that are trying to figure out this. Would it, how would you go about studying this in a way that would be accepted by science as well? Well, and there are, I'm, I'm not super familiar with the literature, so I'm not going to claim to be able to speak for it, but I, I'm aware that there is literature studying the psychological, some of the psychological factors that are common amongst the people who are believe in the supernatural and, and ghosts and a lot, some of those kind of things. So if you accept that psychology is science, then, you know, we have, there are explanations or at least things, factors that they can look at, you know, that, that have been studied and it hasn't come to, oh, there really is some kind of strange supernatural energy. It's psychological factors tend to be in that. And so until, I guess, until I see something, so I, John and I don't think that there is a God, but it is also true that the vast majority of humans in history have believed in gods. But so that you wouldn't say, oh, well, because so many people believe in gods, there must be one uh, in the same way. Right. You, you, I, I guess I'm not going to necessarily buy in to say, well, because a lot of people see or a lot of people think that they're experiencing something paranormal. Therefore, because it's so common that there is they're attributing what they're feeling to the right things. Does that make sense? Right. You can't assume the answer. I mean, we know that people are experiencing something. And so if I told you one way to explain it, you could just be like, well, everybody that's seen good is just crazy. Or they're having, we we actually do is have that clinical really true? <laughs> Well, I mean, we, we do have clinical trials for stuff like remote viewing, and that has proven to be just as good as, as random chance. And then, you know, there's, I can't, I can't, maybe, maybe Paul, you'll remember the, the skeptic that had the $1 million challenge. I, for some reason, I'm blanking. Oh, the James Randi challenge? Was yeah, it James yes, Randy? the James Randi challenge. Yeah, James Randi. The James Randi challenge is for anybody that can do something paranormal or can prove the paranormal, James Randi would give a prize of a million dollars. But the problem is, is that nobody could ever actually stand up to the criteria needed to actually prove that they can do something paranormal. And he, he had several different people tried to pull an over on him and try to win the million dollars and it just never worked. And so we do have examples of this, of these paranormal type of things being actually tested and it turns out not the james randy situation but turns out the other situations of like clairvoyance or remote viewing or things of that nature they're really no better than chance is what the scientific experiments and, and lab results has actually shown i mean if you're if you're looking for like hard empirical evidence currently right now that's where we sit and brie so, i wanted to just oh, based on your last comment it's just because there's a psychological factor for something does not mean that, that you're crazy or that you've had a mental break. Psycholo there's a psychological factor as to why people are hungry at certain times. There's psychological factors about the way you drive. Like just psychological factors are just factors that describe how your brain works. To, it's a, it would be a bit of a misnomer to, and I would never say that just because someone thinks that they've attributed feelings to something paranormal, they've attributed something they have experienced to that. We're arguing with the attribution, not that they felt the thing or not that they've experienced the thing. We would just say that right. they're taking that feeling. Just like when I was a Christian, I felt like God was guiding me through certain things. But looking back at it now, I can see that there were other, plenty of other factors in it, that it wasn't necessarily God the way I was attributing it the initial time. So just wanted to, for the audience there, uh, didn't want to have people think that I was saying that people are crazy. Well, uh, oh, okay. unless... uh, oh yeah, uh, no, I get what you're saying. I mean, it's, it's perfectly reasonable for people to believe something that may or may not be true. But I was wondering for the studies that you referenced, were those all people centric or were they location centric? Because what more, what I was interested in is when people go to a certain location and they deem that location to be haunted rather than like a certain person has believes they have certain powers or a certain person believes that they see both like all the time. 
or many different places, rather that a lot of people go to a certain location and feel a certain. So, uh, sorry, uh, as as far as the stuff that I brought up, these are, uh, I, I can't, I can't name off the studies. Uh, I just only vaguely know about them because it's been a while since I've actually looked into all this. But the, I mean, it it's just, I was just talking about like paranormal abilities. Remote viewing is one of the ones that, that can be tested. As far as like haunted locations, I don't know of any like studies that you could really look up that would indicate whether somebody was right about a place being haunted just because, you know, we don't really have a good scientific way of describing what it means to be haunted or how to detect whether or not a place is haunted or something like that to, you know, be able to test against somebody that claims that they can tell just by their own feeling as to whether or not it's haunted. So I, I can't give you any of that kind of information, but I know that the paranormal abilities of people, which is kind of what we were talking about, when they are tested, it seems like it's no better than just chance, but th that's just with the tests that have been run. And I, I can't really, I, I don't really know all of the scholarship surrounding that, but it would be something uh, good for you to look into because I, I do know that those studies are out there. Yeah, I can yeah, think of an experiment. You could just take a bunch of people to places that they've never been that are traditionally deemed haunted and also normal places and see if there is a difference in their response to the haunted places. You could apply for some funding. That sounds like it would be a uh, scientific <laughs> experiment. <laughs> Maybe I will. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Bree, for calling in. Uh, we, we appreciate these kinds of conversations. So we hope that you call in again. And I hope that you have a great night. You too. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. Awesome. So, Paul, have you had any experiences with like ghosts? Well, not with ghosts, no. But I mean, I would I would have said the Holy Ghost. You know, I, I definitely felt like there were times in my life when I was feeling a, a presence of of God in that way. And I, again, I think it's it comes down to was I was I feeling real feelings or well, like was yeah, I was feeling real feelings. I was just attributing them to the wrong thing. So I feel like even if she did that experiment, and like okay, you all went to one place and we all went to another place, and maybe they figured out that oh there was like some underground cables through there that gave a lot of had a lot of electric magnetic power and that you know and some people are more sensitive about others going back to your point that would that would eventually make it to be it's a natural thing right it's not it's a natural phenomenon and even if there are certain places where people feel weirded out and if that's a phenomenon that doesn't mean we would attribute that to something supernatural you could you know, there's, there's other things we could contribute it to. So I was unclear as to where she was heading with all that, but uh, I guess I would agree that there are places that make people feel weird. Right. Well, and this isn't a comment on our previous caller, but uh, when I was a kid, I thought I heard a ghost and we all know that mm. if you hide under the covers, it prevents mm -hmm. ghosts from coming. So, you know, just, and that works on multiple levels too, by the way, just saying anyways. <laughs> um,